Senator Waters. Thanks very much, uh, Chair. I rise to move Australian Greens Amendment 1 on sheet 7707. Um, now this is a similar amendment to the one that we just voted on, although it's drafted somewhat differently. It achieves a similar outcome. It's uh, drafted in such a way that we had hoped to be sufficient numbers uh, to support it, unlike the amendment that we've just seen. Um, it similarly excludes having native forest burning included in the renewable energy target. Now, it's an affront to common sense, it's an affront to ecology, it's an affront to uh, carbon pollution calculations to ever think that burning native forest should be considered a clean energy source. Um, it's, it's far from carbon neutral and there's new science emerging that actually shows it's three times as carbon intensive um, an energy form. We know that we're talking here about native forests with immense biodiversity and habitat value, uh, not to mention tourism value. Um, these forests are worth far more standing than they are logged. And we've heard some um, pathetic contentions, in my view, uh, from the government benches that this is just going to be waste. Well, what an absolute joke. Everybody knows this is not going to be waste from the forest floor. This is going to incentivise native forest logging. At this point in history, when the bottom's fallen out of the wood chip industry, this one change that the government is now ramming through is going to throw a lifeline to the native forest logging industry. And you are going to see um, the loggers rubbing their hands all the way to the bank on this one. And I think it's really disappointing that on the last amendment, which achieved a similar outcome, albeit through different drafting, that we saw um, the majority of the crossbenchers voting with the government to include native forest logging as a source of so-called clean energy. Um, I recall an election commitment from the Palmer United Party, for one, which said that they would not change the renewable energy target. Much was made of that election commitment, and I'm very disappointed tonight to see that in that last vote um, the Palmer United Party senator voted with the government in what is a clear change to the renewable energy target, and it's one that worsens it. It's one that would see native forest uh, logged and then burnt, and it's one that would crowd out genuine renewable energy. Um, now, it's an outrageous attack on this renewable energy target at all to see the 41,000 gigawatt hours slashed down to 33. It's an outrageous attack to now see um, the wind sector being attacked by this government, presumably with the, at the behest of and with the complete agreement of much of the crossbench. Um, now we see some new architecture being talked about, about a, a wind farm commissioner, when, as we know, we've act, this government has axed the disability uh, discrimination commissioner, and when it's frantically trying to get rid of its environmental responsibilities down to the states, now we have a move in the complete opposite direction to establish additional regulatory infrastructure around wind um, for no good reason, uh, on the basis of some confected concern about people's health. Well, there is no credible evidence that wind farms are in any way damaging to people's health. On the contrary, there is immense evidence that coal mines are damaging to people's health as well as to the climate. And yet we see continued denial from this government of that actual and accurate health concern and information um, as we see denial of the climate, si uh, climate science itself. Um, now, is it any wonder when the fossil fuel industry is basically running this government? Um, again, they will be absolutely thrilled at this cut to the renewable energy target. Yes, there was excess energy in the national electricity market. What a perfect opportunity then to retire some of those oldest and dirtiest coal-fired power stations. Instead, we see this government acknowledging that there's an abundance of renewable energy and doing all of it can to reduce that, to slash that because it just does not get that the rest of the world is already uh, turning away from our coal. Demand is already reducing. Uh, the, the bottom's fallen out of the coal price. Uh, they should know this. I don't understand how they can't see the writing on the wall, that this is time for transition. The rest of the world has already begun that economic transition for good environmental reason as well as for good economic reason. And yet this government is just wedded to the fossil fuel sector. Um, they've slashed the carbon price. They repealed the mining tax rather than fixing it up so that it could raise some decent revenue. Um, they got rid of the Climate Change Authority. Uh, they still want to abolish the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. Um, 
although bizarrely they have some sort of strange draft agreement with the crossbench to give that authority um, more direction. It's pretty inconsistent when you want to abolish that same organisation. And so we have an amendment that we're very proud to move and we're seeking um, all parties' support for. And in fact, we're seeking uh, parties' support to oppose this very bill should native forest logging be allowed by these changes, as this amendment would preclude.